So if I was to describe myself, it would have to be somebody that's dedicated to sharing the knowledge that I've now spent a lot of time uh, gathering and a lot of effort so that others can understand that as well. For the British, a shed can be a sacred place, used to house all sorts of things. We love a good shed here on Barmy, and so today we're at a top secret location to visit possibly the coolest shed in Britain. This is the Vickers MG Collection Research Association. This is our shed. We've got examples from the Second World War, British and Australian made. We've got uh, an example went to Egypt to help them in 1940 by the British. A soft power example that went to Nepal as one of only 24 to give them uh, some support in what they were doing there. We've then come into our corner where we've got light machine guns and we've got the Bren gun, which contrasts with some of the earliest guns we've got in the collection, which are our 1915 pair up here with their little auxiliary tripod. You've then got the Limbered Wagon and the Pack Saddlery. Not everybody had that. The Irish developed their own little handcart, all fitted out for the Vickers. Our earliest gun in the collection is this one from November 1914, uh, AL-311, the 311th gun Vickers that was made. Uh, and then below it, we've got the, this beast, which is the Vickers 0.5 inch, which is what the, it was the main armament of our light tanks as we went to war in 1939. Uh, we've then got our skeletonized example where we can talk through how it works, show people the mechanics of the Vickers. So the Vickers machine gun is a water-cooled, belt-fed machine gun. It's tripod mounted, so you've got this really solid base that enables it to sit there and fire in a very sustained way, so consistently. I sort of see myself now as a bit of a curator of it. You know, I, I choose what we're going to get in and, and, and not necessarily what we dispose of. It's a pretty one-way system. But um, yeah, we certainly, you choose what we're going to put together and how we're going to seek out things so when we can take on somebody's entire collection sometimes just one gun but lots of stuff with it it's really nice to be able to do that because they know it's not being broken up and we know how it's been put together as well uh, you know we, we've had some really nice opportunities over the year to take some of these guns to different displays work with different organizations um, back in 20, uh, 2014, we had a Vickers up on the top of Wellington Arch uh, on Hyde Park Corner because the Boy David Memorial for the Machine Gun Corps is there. English Heritage needed some stuff loaned to them, so, so we did that. Uh, you know, it, it's, been, it's been great to do um, you know, things with others rather than just have a collection in the shed uh, that only I get to see. Vickers machine gun. This is a 1918 made gun, but obviously you know, it's skeletonized, so you can see how it works. Um, it's you know, and just a sort of once over of what a Vickers is. You know, we've got the, the main feature is the water cooling, so seven and a half pints of water in there, uh, and that will boil up after where we've got 600 rounds of ammunition. So it will boil up quite quickly. You know, that's two two and a bit bouts of ammunition, so it might just be two minutes of firing and suddenly you've gone from cold water to boiling water. So then it starts to steam, uh, and that steam will uh, you know, come out of the hose that, that connects on the front here, and then it gets gathered in a bag or a can or something like that, mainly to stop the steam giving away your position. Yeah. So they, you know, it's not to save water, because you don't really have to worry about that too much. You can make a brew with it. it well, yeah, you could make a brew with it. So there's accounts of them making a brew with it. There is, yeah, the, the, um, sure. Yeah, the, the concept of making a brew with some oily, horrible uh, asbestos, which wasn't really a, you know, a concern, but laden um, you know, water, not for me. Desperate times. Probably. Desperate times, yeah. Um, so, especially if you read on the other story where they've just peed in the, in the water jacket to cool it down as well. You're not making, you've got to remember what you've done to make the brew out of it. Who'd like to see us try and make a brew with a Vickers then? So what you end up having to do is you've got the, the rounds come out of the feed block up here and the barrel is down, is down below it. So you pull the belt to the left, crank handle all the way back, let it forward, and then you've got the extractors touching the round. Then we've got to do it again. So we have to pull it back, the round drops, pull the belt to the left, and then we do it down and it just 
jams a little bit. You can now start firing. You know, the, the safety catch is here. You know, there's a big thumb piece and then you know, thumb piece on there and it will fire away. It obviously won't um, because they're drill rounds and it's skeletonized. But that will just keep going and going and going. And a burst of ammunition for the Vickers is 25 rounds. So it's not like five rounds, seven rounds, or three to five or anything like that. It's 25 rounds because the water cooling means that the barrel isn't heating up, it isn't doing anything like that. How long um, did that burst take? Uh, about, about five seconds. For 25 rounds, yeah. 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 So modern weapons um, are principally gas operated. So they will take off a bit of gas, run it up to a piston, and the piston will push back the action so it reworks, but this is mechanical, your prop, this is a recoil operated weapon yeah. where it will just push back like that. Um, so if I had enough power, I would be able to cock that weapon. Just so we could get yeah. a little yeah, shunt yeah. on that yeah. side, yeah. Yeah, it's not happening. Not happening. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, that, that's how it works. Um, it's quite simple and it will keep going until you stop. Yeah, although you say 25 rounds, it will absolutely keep firing until you, until you stop. It does have the nickname of the Grand Old Lady in No Man's Land. Uh, so, you know, and Queen of the Battlefield is another one. Um, the Germans use a very similar design weapon, sort of an ancestor of the Vickers, which is the Maxim, uh -huh. and that was called the Devil's Paintbrush. So, yeah, they, they've all got their nicknames for, for, the, for the weapons, really, um, whether, whether that was the Germans' nickname for it or, or whoever, but, you know, it's, uh, they all are based around this Maxim design. By the time we start the Great War, we're all going into, into the war with very, very similar weapons all around. One of the things about Vickers, although they're an armaments manufacturer, they come from a steel manufacturer, really. Uh, so they understand how you make steel strong but thin. So they're able to, to produce this kind of gun uh, much lighter than the Maximal. So they do that in 1908, take it to the army in 1910, say, what do you think of this? By 1912, we've said, we make some changes, but we really like that. We're going to introduce that across the army. By the time we start the First World War, we've got about 110 of them in service. By the end of the Great War, uh, there's been 100,000 made. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Can we see one in action? Oh my, it's got some weight to it. It has, and that one's obviously got bits cut away because it's a skeletonized one. But yeah, um, yeah so that's the Vickers. Imagine that with uh, seven pints of water in there as well. Yeah. And that's what you'd be carrying into action. Yeah. So yeah, what we do is we get this one firing um, and yeah, you can see why that's worthwhile. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah. Awesome, thank you. This is one of the very last of the Second World War guns, so Australia, and was just spare parts when it came into the UK. Uh, and so it's been rebuilt uh, into a firing gun. So it probably never was fired uh, in Australian service. Um, we, we've now had it proofed and uh, so it's firing for us. Mm. So. We'll do some preparation for firing, but just before we... Before Safety we first. It, we, we will remember, because <laughs> uh, otherwise you soon forget, at least put them in the way. Um, this is the heart of the gun. This is the lock. We're going to get some... Uh, so not, not a breech block. Normally sort of people think about you know, bits of the gun has been a breech block. We'll just make sure we've got plenty of oil in there, um, because although we're not going to be firing those thousands rounds, uh, we do need to make sure that everything is as if we were. Um, so we'll put some spare oil and brush in the uh, in, in the um, in the grip. It's like there. a little feature Close you'd side. get on a uh, <laughs> on a drone or something. Just very uh, ergonomic, isn't it? It is. It's so impressive. That, so that you haven't got to get up. I said, yeah, it's a sitting down gun. You don't have to get up. Um, so we've opened the bottom cover. We've added some oil in. Uh, we've got the spring, uh, we've, you know, but we've weighed the spring, so it should be about three pounds. That's this big spring on the side there. That controls the recoil. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get the ammunition belt in line. Yep, hold that. We're going to put that in there and then get those ear defenders on. Now make sure that this bottom cover is open because it doesn't work with that. And then we're going to pull the belt in, crank handle to the back, belt to the left, let it go and again, and then we're ready to fire. So we're then gonna lift the safety catch, get those four fingers on top, and press the thumb. <laughs> and what we've got there- we are just doing a dry run. <laughs> is, I said ready to fire, oh, and we're fired. So, this, so um, what we've got is that it, we've got a stoppage, which is that surprising. So let's clear that through. So we had a, a live round in the chamber. We can do that again. We're going to put it through there. So we've got two rounds now. So that is one in one in the feed block and one in the chamber. 
and it goes exactly the same again. I'm always interested to hear collectors' motivations, and for Rich, it couldn't be clearer. It all comes back to my grandfather. Well, I'd been interested in military, military stuff for a few years. I've been given some family medals, and you know, Pa was perhaps a facilitator in that, in that he would take me around Salisbury Plain uh, for a drive round, bit of tank chasing, uh, as a 10, 11 year old, going to see what's happening down there. Went down to the Royal Marines Museum, he sat down behind a Vickers gun 50 years on from having served with Vickers machine guns and took it apart and put it back together. And I was just mesmerized by that. You know, huge influence, one of those sort of key, you know, sponge moments. How can you remember how to do that? It's been 50 years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so a few months later, I had the opportunity um, as they came up as a deactivated gun uh, for sale. So I had the opportunity to buy one. Um, so, in there. so yeah, age 12. Um, really, that Vic was your first Vickers machine Vickers gun? Vickers machine gun arrives on the doorstep, age 12, yeah. How did you swing that one with your parents? I have no idea. 